It's Nick and Miss, and we are the Hill Online Campus Pastors, and we are so excited to be here with you today. We have something so awesome for you this morning. That's right. We're so excited that you guys tuned in, and no matter where you're watching from, if you're at home or if you're in your car or where you're tuning in from, just know that God's got such a powerful word, and He wants to meet you right here in this moment. He's coming to you right now, and we're excited to bring worship to you and bring an awesome message. So just no matter where you are, just get ready, because God's got a word for you. Enjoy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Hill Online Campus, man. We are so excited you're joining us. Man, you may be on the road traveling. You may be on vacation. You may be a member of, of the Hill AG or the Hill Stockton or the Hill Bolivar or a future member of the Hill Nevada. But no matter what, listen, we are pumped you're with us today. We're, we're picking up our series uh, to the core. And we're having so much fun in this to the core series, guys. We're really learning who we are as a church to the core of our being as the hill we're learning who we are man so we're so excited today we're going to be picking this thing up in ephesians chapter 2 which is one of my favorite passages in all the new testament man ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 i'm reading out of the nlt and here's what it says it says for we are god's masterpiece come on somebody we are god's masterpiece he has created us anew in christ jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago we are his masterpiece for for to the core guys it simply said this that we were made on purpose and with purpose and i think about that and i think about how often in our life uh we we say we're gonna try we, we say like someone might say hey you're gonna you want to go hang out this weekend and we say I try, which is a nice way of saying I have no intention on seeing you this weekend. Come on, somebody. We say that because we don't want to let people down. And really another re reason we say that is because we kind of are afraid that maybe maybe we don't have what it takes to succeed in that area. Like, like hey, are you going to try for the new job promotion? Are you, you going to put in for that? I'm, I, I try. And you're telling, you're saying you try, so you're not setting yourself up for a letdown. But see, you have to understand that when, when the word says that you were created on purpose and with purpose, that he was intentional. He meant it when he said it, that we have to live on purpose. Come on, somebody. So if we're going to, quote, try, man, there ain't no trying. Let's go get it done. Let's get after this thing. I, I love this because when I think about this, and, and even mixed with, like, Psalm 139, guys, it says that he knit you together in your mama's womb. We're in Jeremiah. He says, before I formed you in your mama's womb, I knew you. See, the word's teaching us that every little thing about us, he individual, intricately created, that, that you, you weren't a mistake. And, and here's what I love about this, guys. Even the things that you don't like about you, even the things that drive you crazy about you, the things that you wish you could change about you, he made it on purpose. That he, he individually, intricately knits you together. Like when I picture this, when I, when, when I picture this, guys, it's so cool because I picture like all of heaven. Uh, I picture God at an easel. And I picture all of heaven surrounding God, right? And he's, 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 painting, he's painting this picture. And, and as he's painting, I picture like, like maybe Michael looking over God's shoulder saying, God, that thing is incredible. What do you call that? I, I, maybe I picture, I, I picture um, maybe Jesus coming around this end saying, Daddy, man, that picture's beautiful. What are you going to call that thing and I, I picture like Noah in the background saying my goodness Lord the ark was dope but what is that thing I picture like Daniel and I picture like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego I picture all of heaven surrounding him as God is, is painting this picture right he's painting this thing and he signs it at the end and, and they say God what are you going to call it and he says I'm going to call it Samantha or I'm going to call it John or Tom or, or I'm going to call it Bo or Megan it, it's my masterpiece See, we have to understand, guys, that God stopped heaven to display you. Like, like God stopped everything going on because you were his masterpiece. Guys, that's insane. And you don't feel good enough or something? I think about my kids whenever they're in life and how they'll come up to me and we'll talk. And, and they feel like maybe they're not good enough at this or they feel like they... they 
maybe it's a for, for maybe it's singing or maybe it's an athlete a, a sport or or maybe it's hunting or or this or that like sometimes they they feel like I'm not quite good enough yet dad well then there's the other one my son Jace we were shooting guns the other day no joke we were shooting pistols and we were I call it hot shot we had this little target and as you shoot it it bounces and so we were shooting this thing and and it gets out there like 25 yards, and he's got this little 380. The kid beat me. No joke. Like, I shoot it, and I think, I got this thing on lockdown. It's me, my 9-year-old, and another adult. I shoot it. I think I won this round. I got him beat. And that little punk shoots this thing at like 25 yards. Would you know my 9-year-old tar- started talking smack at me? So I spanked him, and we moved on. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. But the reality is, like, they know. Like, my kids know that, that, that if they want to set their mind to it, they're going to succeed. But somewhere from being a kid and somewhere between then and growing up, we lose the wonder. We lose the wonder of a God that loves us. We lose the, the wonder of the what if. We, we would say we come back down to reality. I don't think that's what God would say. I think God would say we're putting what he wants to do in and through our lives in a box. I think God would say that we put everything he has for us inside this case and and we say God well you can use me but only if it's like this and God's going man I have so much more for you than that man you were made on purpose and with purpose I love the story of judges I love the story of judges uh, chapter 6 it's the story of Gideon and 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 Israel messed up and I, I know I'm talking to a crowd that ain't never messed up come on somebody you're perfect in every way right um, but for real Israel had messed up and and in the the course of their messing up, verse 3 of, of chapter 6, I want to read what it says. It says, For whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the people of the east would come up against them. They would camp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance in Israel, no sheep or ox or donkey. They would come up with their livestock and their tents, and they would come like locusts in number, both they and their camels, and they couldn't. Even be counted. I, I love this story. There's so much going on here. But, but Israel, the, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and these people from the east would show up. And it would terrify Israel. And so Israel, they'd be planting their crops. They'd be doing all the heavy lifts and all the hard work. And then these folks showed up. And Israel would go hide in the mountain. But it's so crazy. In the Hebrew, when we break down the word Midian, you know what it means? It means strife. When we break down the word Amalekite, it means valley. And can I tell you what a valley is? A valley is a, depre- is a depression in land. So understand what it's saying. It says in the middle of what should be the harvest of your life, in the middle of what should be possibly the greatest moments in your life, all of a sudden strife shows up. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? Like you get the, the job promotion and you're excited and you come home and your kid done done something crazy and you're frustrated. And then what should be an exciting time you find yourself irritated or or you get in a fight with someone or a a best friend sends you a a message or a text or or you get mad at someone over social media or maybe it's with a spouse but what I'm saying is there's times in our life when we should be celebrating when we should be reaping the harvest of everything we've done we find ourselves in the middle of the fight we find ourselves for, for some of us We find ourselves in these states of depression, like like looking at God saying, God, why? Like, look how hard I've worked. Like, I imagine, I imagine these little, these these guys as they're in the middle of, in in the middle of all their labor. And as as they're getting ready to harvest, man, the enemy shows up. I just can't help but think that maybe, maybe this isn't you. Maybe this is just Pastor Bo here. But, but I can't help but think they look at heaven and they're like, God, are you serious? Again, everything I've worked for is getting taken from me. Again, someone else is going to live out what I started. Someone else is going to fulfill the dream that I worked for. Like, I'm reading this story, and I I can't help but think that the Mennonites came, and the Amalekites came, and and strife showed up, and and, and depression showed up, and it makes us want to run. But it says another group showed up. It said, people from the east. It said the people from the east, and east there would denote uh, far east, would denote ancient. Symbolically, it's showing us that whenever we're trying to walk in promise, trouble going to show up. Depression is going to try to show up. And, and, and Eastern people would mean old issues, old problems that just seem to come back. I know I'm talking to a righteous crowd that don't know what I'm saying. But I have a feeling there's someone out there 
that knows what I'm talking about, like every time you get so close, every time you get so close to what you feel like is the promise, every time you get so close, like you know it's yours, you know you're going to walk in the fullness of this thing, and then pretty soon this old temptation comes back up. And this old problem comes back up, and you find yourself falling to it. You find yourself chasing things that God wants to deliver you from. You find yourself going back to anger or back to lust or back to temptation or back to fear or back to bitterness or back to unforgiveness. Like, it's so crazy when I read this story because God's saying there's a produce for you. Come on, there's a produce, there's a promise in store for you, but trouble's going to show up. See, a lot of times we feel like trouble comes and it means we're in the wrong spot. Let me ask you. What was the Israelites, were they in the right spot? Well, l- let's look. Had they labored and had they done their part? Yes. We say it like this. You do the natural. God will do the super. And together, you guys will do something supernatural. So they had done what God showed them to do. They had plowed the fields. They had planted the grain. Right? They had given it time to take root. So they had done everything they know to do. All they had left was the harvest. See, sometimes we think when, whenever trouble comes that it's we're in the wrong spot. And, and while that can be true, like if you're making dumb decisions, there's dumb repercussions. Come on, somebody. You know who, I, you know who I'm talking to. But for a lot of us, trouble shows up to try to detour us from the promise. Like, so this is what happened. Trouble showed up. The, the enemy was coming after their, their, their promise. The enemy was stealing what they had worked for. And they, they run up and hide in the mountains. And you have this little, this cute little guy named Gideon. Come on, somebody. I picture him being about super short, like maybe five foot six. And, and, and who knows what all he looked like. But nevertheless, I'm sorry. I just think I'm funny. Come on, somebody. Anyhow, Gideon is in the middle he, uh, uh, of the mountains. And it says he's hiding. Hiding behind a wine press, right? And this angel of the Lord shows up, right? And 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 whenever it says that he was when he was hiding behind a wine press grinding wheat, it was it was of the day whether and I'm not trying to get into anything political right now, but of the day that would have been woman's work, okay? So it was denoting that he wasn't even doing what a typical uh, male of his age would do, right? He was doing the easy thing, just trying to stay out of trouble, trying to stay out of depression, and trying to stay away from old issues. But isn't that what we do? We always look for the easy way out when we're in trouble. We look for the easy way out versus the right way out. So we find Gideon, and he's in this place, and the angel shows up, and he says, Arise, mighty warrior. And Gideon, like, shakes, and he looks around, and he looks at this angel in the face, and the angel looks at him, and he says, Arise, mighty warrior. And Gideon's like, who are you talking to? And the angel's like, you're the only one in the cave, idiot. Come on, somebody. He looks at, he looks at Gideon and says, I'm talking to you. And, and Gideon's like, okay, you don't understand who you're talking to, right? I am the least. Okay, my family, well, Israel, we're the least of all the tribes of the world. And my clan is the least of all of Israel, right? My tribe. And my family is the least of the tribes, of all the tribes of Israel. And I am the least of my family. What Gideon was saying here in Judges chapter 6 is I am the weakest. I am the loneliest. I am the worst person on the face of the planet. Isn't it funny? So often we feel like no one understands what we're going through. Like it's only us. Like we're the only one battling this temptation. Or we're the only one battling this struggle. Or we're the only one battling this, this frustration or this offense. We're the only one battling loneliness. We're the only one. Gideon's like, I'm the only one. And it's just me. And, Gideon, and the angel says, arise, mighty warrior. And like I, I read that. And I think Gideon begins to have this dialogue, almost this, this, this uh, um, confrontation with the angel of the Lord. And Gideon's like, I ain't what you say I am. But see, the problem is God doesn't see us as we are. God sees us as he's created us to be. Come on, somebody. See, you see how you are. And you think that's how God views you. God doesn't view you how you are. He views you. As the masterpiece he created in heaven. He views you on purpose and with purpose. Like you see yourself and think, man, I'm worthless. I keep struggling with this. These old issues coming back. And so I don't know how to handle them, so I'm going to run and hide. I love that because it's like we don't run and hide. Yeah, right. We run and hide all the time. The angel looks at him and he says, man, 
I don't see you with your issues, right? I don't see you with your problems. I see you with your promise, right? I don't, I don't see you. I don't see you with all, all the struggle. Yeah, you have struggle, but I see you through the lens of my Savior, Right? The Son of God. So I'm reading this. As a matter of fact, Jesus quotes Isaiah 61 and Luke 4. And he says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. He's known me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those captive, to give them an oil of gladness instead of despair. What he's saying in Luke 4, quoting Isaiah 61, he's saying, I came to give you a new identity. I feel like... Uh, years ago, the Lord gave me that verse, and he said, the Lord told me, he said, Bo, I've called you to not a nation, but a generation. I've called you, basically, he, the Lord was telling me, he said, I've called you for, to, 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 to tell people that they no longer have to struggle with an identity crisis, they're mine. Like, I read this, and I can't help but feel like that God is telling me to tell you, no longer do you have to feel, as Pastor Nick saying, like a slave. No longer do you have to feel like you're going to struggle the rest of your life. Guys, you were created on purpose and with purpose by a God that is crazy. He's radical about you. That's, that's awesome. That's a love that is beyond me. See, the problem is we see ourselves through the lens of our problem. But we need to see, our th we need to see ourselves through the lens of his power. I'm going to say it again. See, we see ourselves with all of our insecurities. We see ourselves with, with all the things that we feel like are wrong with us. We see ourselves through the lens of our problems. But we need to shake our focus and begin to see ourselves through the lens of his power. Because his power is greater than any of your problems. Like, I read this story, and it totally jacks me up, right? Because the angel looks at little baby Gideon. Come on, somebody. And he says, Gideon, what are you doing laying down on the job? Get up. Get up. See, I'm here to tell you today, why are you so down? Why do you feel like you don't even want to try anymore? Why do you feel like, why bother? No one cares. Let me say what this angel said to Gideon. Let me say it to you. Get back up. Don't stay down. Get up. Man, God has a call on your life. He has purpose for you, and it's time to get back up. I understand that stuff knocks us down. That's real life, man. I, I would never be the pastor. I'm never the guy that acts like, like that's not real. Right? Life is going to knock us down. But it's our decision if we stay down. Get back up. I don't care if you got to write it on your mirror. If you got to write it on your mirror today, ready or not, here I come. I'm getting up. Come on, somebody. I'm coming out of the cave. I'm coming out of fear. I'm coming out of anxiety. I'm coming out of addiction. I'm coming out of issues. I'm coming out of my own insecurity. And I'm coming into joy. I'm coming into peace. I'm coming into purpose. I'm coming into calling, anointing. I'm coming into the very thing that God has called me to be. I'm coming into purpose. Come on, somebody. It's time to get, it's time to get up. You may have to write it on your mirror again. Don't you see? You are God's masterpiece. It might encourage you to write it on your mirror so you have to see it every day. But you're his masterpiece. Gideon, in the midst of this struggle, Gideon, in the midst of everything he was facing, God said, Gideon, you got to get up, kid. So Gideon gets up and he arises. And Gideon goes to work to do what God called him to do. And, and long story short, he, he, uh, he has like 32,000 guys that are going to fight with him. And God looks at him and says, Gideon, you got too much help. <laughs> and Gideon says, what do you mean? And God says, you tell the ones that are afraid just to go on home. And like, and I don't, I don't, uh, don't have the number, but the, uh, like, like a, several thousand people leave. And Gideon's like, okay, well that's cool. Like ten thousand left. We got twenty two thousand left. I'm comfortable. We got this still. We got this twenty thousand that are afraid. Uh, they left. See, sometimes people leave our life, right? And we get really, we get really offended or hurt by that. But we have to understand that not everyone is called to be in our life for the whole thing. People, some people are called to our life. For certain seasons to help us in certain ways, right? But they may be afraid of what God has. Or they may be, for whatever reason, they may have to be sifted out 
And, and so Gideon realizes it doesn't change my call. So, okay, we got whatever it is, 20,000 or 12,000. We still got this. And God said, Gideon, there's still too much help. So G G Gideon's like, you're kidding me, God. And God says, Gideon, just let them drink. And, and the ones that, that, that cup the water up and lap it up like a dog, take them with you. And 300 guys fit that bill. 32,000, uh, over 31,000 left. And Gideon is stuck now with these 300 to beat Midian, to beat Amalekites, and all the people of the east. See, I think God was showing us that you can't rely on your power to get it done. Mm. You can't rely on your ability to accomplish it. Yeah, you were created on purpose, but it's still his power. It's still his anointing that breaks the yoke. A few years ago, my daughter came home, and she wanted to plant these seeds. So my wife and her plant them outside, and um, some time passes, and, and I thought nothing was going to happen with these seeds. It was crazy. But then some more time passes, and, and uh, some, some, like, weeds start popping up, and I'm, and I'm watching the weeds grow, and the weeds get a little bigger and a little bigger. And pretty soon these weeds were, they were ugly as sin. Come on, somebody. They were right by my front door. And I remember griping at my wife, like, honey, why are you letting them nasty weeds grow outside the house? Like, why are you allowing these weeds to stay? And I, we, we discussed it. Can I say it like that? Come on, somebody. We discussed it for a few weeks, like, 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 cut the weeds out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna weed eat them. I'm gonna take care of them. I'm gonna mow them down. And my mirror wife saying, just give it some more time. And I said, I don't want to give it more time. The weeds are ugly. I don't like where they're at. I don't like the way they look. I'm gonna mow them down. And my wife again, Megan said, baby, just give it. She calls me baby because she thinks I'm cute. Come on, somebody. Uh, she said, she said, baby, give it a little more time. And I remember the weeds came, they, they grew to a head, and the head bloomed into the most beautiful flowers you'd ever seen in your life. See, the reality is when they planted the seed, the seed had to die for the plant to live. See, for your purpose to come to fruition, something has to die. That something is self. It's work. It's effort. But for you to be everything God's called you to be, something has to die. And that something is, is your desires, it's your will, so God's will can be made manifest. I remember they, they, they begin to grow, but the, before they ever grew up, they had to grow down. See, a seed, when it dies, it breaks open. And, and the reality is God has no intention of breaking you down and every intention of breaking you open so that everything he's called you to do can come out. Everything, the anointings and the good stuff he's put inside of you so, is so that it can come out. He doesn't, again, want to break you down. He wants to break you open. And over time, these weeds, they bloomed in, into these most beautiful flowers. I was thinking about this in the context of, of what you were made on purpose and with purpose. I was thinking about this in the context of how, of how sometimes we're going through things like Gideon that we don't like and that we don't understand. And the reality is you may be right now in a season of lack, a season of frustration. But maybe, I don't know, maybe you just need a little more time. See, see, you may be in this place that you're saying, God, how come? God, why? God, I sow. God, I work. God, I labor. And God's going, I know. See, you may have been like Gideon, where, where it's time to get up and go do something about it. You may be like Gideon, where it's time to go take back what God said you could have. But for some of us, we're rushing the process. See, there's one principle that is in everything we do. In every, every battle we face, every victory we win, everything that we face, there's one common denominator. And that's time. Time. I remember when my wife was pregnant with my firstborn. I remember talking to the Lord about it, saying, Lord, I can't wait to hold. It was, we knew it was a girl. Her name was Chloe. Is Chloe. I remember saying, Lord, I can't wait to hold Chloe. I cannot wait to, to love her. I can't, I'm so excited about this. And, and I had that crazy thought that said, but if you give her to me now, she won't live. See, the pregnancy, the time had to go full term. 
for the, for the, the, the weeds at, by my front door. See, the seed time, it had to go full term for us to see the fruit of the flower. See, maybe, maybe you're in the middle of a process. But at the end, it's purpose. Maybe, maybe what God has called you to is beyond what people think, and it's even beyond what you think about you. Now, I'm not someone who goes, well, I'm not a pastor. I'm a, I'm a banker. I'm a lawyer. That's awesome. Yeah, maybe what God has called you to, even within the confines of your profession, is beyond what you could even dream about yourself. Maybe you're homeless and jobless. It doesn't change the fact that you were made on purpose and with purpose. See, guys, it's time for us to step out from behind the wine press and into the identity that God has for our life. It's time for us to allow time to take its place, right? Allow the weeds to grow. Allow, allow every piece of that to have its time so that the flower can bloom. It's, it's time for a lot of us. We've been hiding and running from a whole lot of stuff. But it's time to come out from behind the wine press and begin to walk in the fullness that God has called you to walk in. It's time for us to live and be who God has called us to live and be no matter what you're facing today remember you were created on purpose and with purpose all right guys what a great word what a great day of worship we're so glad you tuned in and we hope you enjoyed that awesome message and that awesome worship thank you for joining us with the hill online and we just want to encourage you today that if God spoke to your life today, if he did something, tell us. We want to know. So we encourage you to send us a, drop us a line. Tell us what God did in your life. And we just want to encourage you that it starts from here. God wants to continue working in your life. So we invite you to join us for our weekly services. We invite you to check out our website. Join in our, our groups online so God can be working in your life and we can disciple you. We're going to pray for you and just pray that God continues to work in your life. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for everybody that tuned in today. God, we thank you for the lives that are changed and God, for what you're doing in them right now and what you're going to do in the future. God, we praise you for that, Lord. We know that your work says that he who began a good work in us will carry it out to completion. And God, we are standing on that. Bless all of our viewers today, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Guys, we'll see y'all next week.